August 25, 1270. On the death of St. Louis IX. I shall not say anything about his journey to Tunis, nor give any account of it, because I was not there, thank God. And I do not wish to say or put anything in my book of which I am not quite sure. So we will speak only of our holy king and say that after he landed at Tunis, before the castle of Carthage, he fell sick of a catter of the stomach, by reason of which he took to his bed and felt that the time was come for him to pass from this world to the next. Thereupon he called for my lord Philip his son and bade him to observe as though it were his testament all the instructions that he left him and the king wrote them so they say with his own blessed hand. When the good king had given his instructions to my lord Philip his infirmity began to increase greatly upon him and he asked for the sacraments of holy church. And he received them with a sound mind and right understanding as was plain. For whilst they were anointing him and repeating the seven psalms he repeated the verses in response. And I heard my lord the Count of Alencon, his son, relate that when death drew near, he cried on the saints to aid and succour him and likewise on my lord St. James, repeating his prayer the while which begins, Esto Domini, which means, May the Lord sanctify and watch over our people. Next he called upon my lord St. Denis to help him saying his prayer which means Lord God, grant that we may so despise the rugedness of this world that we may fear no adversity. And then I heard my lord of Alencon say that his father called upon St. Genevieve. After that, the holy king made them lay him on a bed strewn with ashes and laid his hands upon his breast and looking up to heaven yielded up his spirit to our creator in the very same hour when the Son of God died upon the cross. A precious matter and worthy of tears are the death of this holy prince who so righteously and faithfully watched over his kingdom who did so many fair works of charity and founded so many fine institutions. And just as a writer when he has ended his book illuminates it with gold and azure, so did this king illuminate his kingdom with the fair abbeys that he built and with the almshouses and convents of preachers, grey friars and other orders of foretold. On the morrow of the feast of St. Bartholomew the Apostle, passed away from this world Louis a good king in the year of the incarnation of our Lord, the year of grace. 1270, and his bones were preserved in a casket and buried at St. Denis in France, where he had chosen his burying place. In this same place was he buried, and there God has wrought many a fair miracle for his sake and by his merits. Afterwards at the instance of the King of France, Philip III and by the Pope's orders the Archbishop of Rouen came and brother John of Sermois, who afterwards became bishop. They came to St. Denis in France and stayed there a long while inquiring into his life and works and miracles and I got word to go to them and they kept me for two days. And after they had made inquiry of me and others what they had learned was taken to the court of Rome and the Pope and Cardinals diligently perused it. And in accordance with what they had read, they did him justice and placed him among the number of martyr confessors which was and always should be a great joy to the kingdom of France and a great honor to all of his descendants who will copy him in well-doing and great honor to all of his race who by good works seek to follow in his footsteps, but a great dishonor to those of his race who seek to work evil for men will point at them and will say that the holy king from whom they sprang would never have done such wickedness. After this good news had arrived from Rome, the king Philip IV appointed a day, the morrow of Saint Bartholomew, on which day the holy body was lifted. When it was lifted the Archbishop of Rheims that then was, God rest his soul and Lord Henry of Villers, my nephew who at that time was Archbishop of Lyons, bore it in front, with many others, Archbishops and Bishops, whose names I cannot tell, and it was carried to the stage that had been erected. Their brother John of Samoys preached the sermon and among the other great deeds of our holy king, he recorded one to which I had bore witness on my oath and which I had seen, saying as follows. In order that you may see that he was the most faith-abiding man that ever lived in his day, I must tell you that he was so faithful that even when dealing with the Saracens he wanted to keep his promise, though he had only given them his bare word, and though had it been kept he would have lost ten thousand pounds and more. And he related all that had happened as it is written further back. And at the end he said, do not imagine that I am deceiving you, for I see a man here who told me this and bore witness to it under oath. When the sermon was over the king and his brothers assisted by their kindred carried the holy body back into the church, for it behoved them to do him honor, 
for great honor has been done to them, if as I said before, they do not thwart it. Let us beseech him that he will pray God to grant us all we need both for soul and body. Amen. There is still something that I want to tell you about our holy king, which is to his honor. It is this. In a dream me thought I saw him in front of my chapel of Joinville, and me thought he was wondrous joyous and light-hearted. And I myself was very happy at seeing him in my castle and I said to him, Sir, when you leave this place, I will lodge you in a house of mine, which stands in one of my towns called Chevillon. And he answered me laughing, and said, By my faith, Sir de Joinville, I am in no such hurry to leave this place. When I awake, I thought it over and it seemed to me that it was God's pleasure and his that I should give him a dwelling in my chapel and so I have done. For I have built an altar in honor of God and of himself and there is a revenue appointed in perpetuity for the service of it. I have reminded my lord King Louis of these things, who inherits his name and methinks he would please God and our holy King Louis if he were to procure some relics of the true holy body and send them to the said chapel of St. Lawrence at Joinville so that those who come to his altar may be moved to greater devotion. Amen.